Hey YouTube, good morning, it's Chuck. Well, I've got a video I'm gonna make today that is a little bit of a swarm season tip and then a few housekeeping tips that I've, I've just been going through um, the last few days. Um, I'm gonna change up my swarm lure this year. For those of you that have been keeping up with me for uh, a year now, uh, you might remember me making these gummies last year and I still got some in the fridge from last year. They were basically made from gelatin um, and I impregnated some lemongrass oil and uh, another oil in there, a neroli oil I think it was. Either way, the essential oils to attract um, swarms. But I was impregnating it in the gelatin to try to create a little bit of a slow release. And if I'm smelling these and I, and I rip them um, or cut them just to kind of show you they're very pliable in the cold weather. And today it's, you know, nice and cool in the 50s. And there's a little bit of a smell in there, but obviously after a year, I wouldn't expect this to still kind of work. I'm not gonna do these again this year. While I do like them, the one downside specifically here in Florida is at a certain temperature in the 90s, these turn into little pools of gel and then they re-solidify in a pool. So they don't really maintain their shape in the temperature variation that I experienced last year. It was a fun experiment. I really love this material made from gelatin. Take a look at that video if you're interested in it, but I, uh, I'm not gonna do that this year. But I've come up with another idea that I think might be even better. And I'm just gonna show you, this is what I've got. These are little, vials, centrifuge vials, two milliliters in size, that I've put lemongrass oil in with some candle wick from my wax making candles. And it's wicking perfectly, almost like you might imagine those oils uh, that you put in your house if you want to kind of air freshen. It's got the little oil canister and it wicks out. Same exact principle, or an oil candle same exact principle. Um, I've had these in these vials for about a week now and the vial is still full and I've still got a nice smell of lemongrass oil. Um, I don't quite know the entire duration these will last but having already lasted a week and still having pure lemongrass oil in here um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and use this technique this year. There's a little bit of a variation here and I'm going to show you how I make them and I've even got one here in a Ziploc bag um, because this is a technique I used when I used to use q-tips um, and if it was uh, evaporating too quickly this might slow it down a bit. So let me go ahead and show you how I made them and if you want to try this um, you're more than welcome to. I bought these vials off of Amazon, and good lord, wouldn't you know I had to get 600 of them, um, which is ridiculous. Uh, if all of you lived locally to me, I'd say come by and grab a few and let's chat bees for a little bit. Here's the label I got off of uh, Amazon. It's basically uh, 600 pieces, 0.5 milliliter with cap for lab uh, is what it says on here. So I think I said two milliliters a few minutes ago, but they're very, very tiny. And for reference to my hand, you can see they're you know, about the size of my thumb kind of uh, vials. Now, they are watertight, and you might say, well, how in the heck are you gonna get that to work? But what I found, and let me just go ahead and show you how I made these. I was just cutting some of this candle wick, and you could buy candle wicking up from anywhere. You know, I've got it stuck in my mold here when I used to make a lot of candles. Um, you could probably use string, some sort of cotton string also, which is really what candle wick is. It's just kind of cotton rope. Um, cut it to where it's just a little bit longer than the vial, and I'm just using snips here, like that. And then uh, all I did successfully so far is a little awl or something with a sharp tip on it. You're essentially just gonna put that wick on there and press it through right in the middle of the top of the vial. Now I'm doing this uh, to demonstrate and we'll see if I get it on the first try. All right, and once you get it through, you gotta kinda pull it through as you might imagine because this tiny little hole is, and I'm pushing in, not out. That way as I push the plastic inside, the direction of the seal is as tight. And I've got a little uh, dental pick here. You could probably use anything that you think you can get to grab that cotton uh, on the inside. And I do recommend putting it through from the top and pulling it in rather than pulling it out. Because you might imagine the direction of this tiny little hole I made in the plastic. So I'm recommending push it in from the top and grab it. 
And I think I've got it. All right, now, it's pretty tight, which is exactly what you want. And there you go. So now I've got my wick, a little bit fuzzy on the inside, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how much to leave on the outside. And then, plain old lemongrass oil, you can use uh, whatever oil you had. You know, if you wanted to take your Swarm Commander or whatever sort of lure you're buying instead of just pure lemongrass oil, and I'm just filling up this little vial. Probably not plum full, but because the wick is going to take a little bit of volume there. Maybe you can see that. And now I'm just going to put that wick in there and snap it shut until it seals. And that is what it looks like. Now, how much of this wick is on the outside is what I think controls the amount of aroma that's coming off of them. And I say that because I made two different examples here. I have one where the wick is just barely sticking out and I have another one that's nice and fuzzy. If I were to smell each of these, the one that's obviously got a little bit more exposure, I think is, is putting out a little bit stronger scent. Um, but if these can last upwards of a month, uh, and they may last the entire swarm season, but of course I'm gonna experiment this year, just like I did last year with the gummies, I'm really excited about these little vials. Um, the vials were cheap. Uh, obviously I got enough vials here to last me the rest of my lifetime. Um, and then uh, the wick is obviously pretty cheap too. You might need to get that. If you don't have that, maybe some cotton string, but I don't know, give it a try and let me know if you guys think that this is something you might wanna try also. Um, if you live locally, let me know. Come on over and I'll give you some vials uh, just for the uh, conversation to have with you. Okay, so that was my first topic about the vials uh, for the swarm traps that I'm gonna be putting out. Now swarms here in Jacksonville in zone 9B, the earliest swarms I get are usually the first week of February. That is the early swarm. The average peak of my swarms happens in uh, early March to around March 11th. And I've actually got a graph of that because I graph my swarms every single year so I kind of know the range and there's a little bit of a bell curve that, that, that is forming over the years I've been collecting that. If I remember, I'll try to put that graph here so you guys can see how I keep track of that locally. Um, Oop, and my uh, vials are falling out of the corners that I cut in my Ziploc bags so the uh, aroma can, can leak out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this away and we're gonna go into the next topic. Now, the next topic I wanna talk about today is about, this is kind of wintertime chores um, and this is just a tip. I've been making a lot of frames um, and one of the things that's pretty important to recognize as the beekeeper is cycling out your frames at, a, at an interval that kind of keeps you from collecting too much stuff in your wax. Um, really old dark comb, you kind of need to get it out of your apiary. And the problem is, as beekeepers, as we do this for more and more years, we kind of lose track of the year of our frames. So this is just a trick I wanted to tell you. If you're into queen wearing, guess what? We get a new color every single year every with a five-year rotation which is about the right time to start cycling out your frames here's a green pen and this is the uh, the marker i use um, and i've already got my green and they had a nice bright green which helps you spot the queen when you spot them so when you make your frames just go put a dot with the color of the queen for that year on your frames and you know in about four or five years when you see these you look back at that and go "Ooh, that green dot frame sure is looking rough i wonder how old it is and you'll just be able to think back. And honestly, even if you kept a frame nine years or even 10 years, you would know because the colors w would not come back around. Uh, and you would probably be able to tell by the age of the comb that that is not last year's green, but maybe six years ago green. So just putting some green dots on my frames, you know, that could wear off, but it's just some sort of indicator of how old the frames are. So you can kind of plan your cycling out and uh, keeping your fresh hives clean. Let me move these out of the way and go on to the last subject of what I've been working on, just in case you guys are interested in this. So queen wearing rearing there's a lot of ways of making your cell starters and uh, the queen rearing process i am going to be doing that for uh, my master beekeeper beekeeper uh, listen to me master beekeeper uh, application of practical skills portion of that uh, this year demonstrating small scale queen rearing and there's many many ways i've set up cell starters in the past you know uh, flying cell starters uh, individuals uh, nucleus boxes um but another one that is a little bit more traditional that not many small beekeepers are doing these days is creating what used to be called and still is called a swarm box. And what it is, is a box that is 
designed to keep the bees in the hive so they cannot escape uh, while they are hopelessly queenless and cannot make any cells. So this is the bottom of a swarm box. And you see I've got a nucleus uh, colony here with just some empty frames in it. And this is designed to sit in here and be closed up. If I had an entrance on it, I would obviously close it up and I would keep these bees in here. And what it does is give some a volume down here for just to put a ton of nurse bees in here so that the hive has more bees than it knows what to do with in order to create the queen cells from the uh, grafts that I put in. So I just basically made this bottom frame and put some edges on here so that I can set a nucleus box on it. And the last step I needed to do was just apply some of this ventilation screen on here so that the bees cannot escape, but at the same time have plenty of air and water. And obviously water, you could put a little sponge in the bottom if you needed to, but and I'm just putting in this screen real quick to show you how that would work. Okay, hopefully I sped that up for you. No need to watch me refill my staple gun. But now you can see I've essentially got a screened in bottom that I could put a nucleus box on here, load this up with nurse bees, put my graph frame in the middle, put a little sponge in the bottom to keep them fed. Probably have a frame feeder over here on the edge just to have uh, some food in here if I don't have enough honey frames to keep them fed uh, while grafting. This is one method of creating a swarm box, but the important part is having an accessory or a home-built box that's got the necessary ventilation because if you're trapping an overloaded amount of bees in the box, it perhaps can get just a little bit too hot. All right, so those are the things I wanted to talk about today. There's a whole lot going on in the apiary. Uh, it's getting ready to be swarm season here in about six weeks. And I've got about 12 to 14 traps I'm gonna put out. I'm gonna use these little vials. That is the primary subject today, is showing you guys how I was making these vials with lemongrass oil. I'd really love it if some of you guys tried this out too and let me know if it worked for you or where you got the idea from. You know, and that's just if you're not gonna go out and buy Swarm Commander. Swarm Commander has a product similar to this with a little glass vial that you break. It's the same concept of essentially having a, a product that has a slow release mechanism so you're not going out there and having to squirt it every few days. And it also is important to not use too much scent because if you get too much scent, they just, it's overwhelming for the bees and, and they won't go in the hive. And if you've ever seen a swarm not go in the hive, but actually be attracted, but ball up on the bottom of the hive, that's usually due to an overwhelming scent of um, too much uh, lemongrass oil or swarm commander. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.